Good evening. And we thank the Almighty God for yet another wonderful day. We bring you the Old Testament survey recording from Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 11. It is my prayer that the good Lord will be with us, grant us the grace to learn and also to understand. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful time. We ask that you be with us. Grant us your grace in our learning and grant us understanding. Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we go straight forward to the Old Testament. Um, looking at um, having a quick survey of all the things in there. And then it's my prayer that the good Lord will himself see us through. Okay, so we go to the Old Testament. As we already know, the Old Testament itself starts from Genesis. And then is, we already are aware that um, the Old Testament has 39 books. There are 39 books in the Old Testament, which can be grouped into the law. And under the law, we have the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. When you put together the history books, you have Joshua, Judges, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. We have Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. We come to the poetry or the wisdom books: Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Sons of Songs, or Sons of Solomon. And then you look at the major prophets: Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Lamentation. The minor prophet was here, Joshua, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Ega, Zachariah, Malachi. So these are the books that makes up the Old Testament. And then they have been grouped into five. We have five major groups. Here. So looking at the law with our study today, we are looking at Genesis chapter one to chapter 11. And so we'll be looking at the law, the law which has to be with the first five books of Moses. But we are sentencing ourselves on Genesis. But the formation of this, uh, the Pentateuch, which is the law, we have the creation story in Genesis chapter one, the creation story continuing in chapter two. Then we have the setting up how they started, human lived during the time up to the verse uh, chapter 11. You go to the monarchy, and that's uh, the patriarch uh, of Israel. That one is another whole story on its own. But we are just going to be sentenced ourselves on Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 11 today. So let's begin with the creation story. There are two creation stories in Genesis. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 1, verse 4a. And then Genesis chapter 2 verse 4b to verse 25. In this story, we get to know the Genesis chapter one, verse one to chapter two, verse 4a story, has the days numbered for us. So if we should take a quick look at it from the Genesis, we'll get to know that the days are numbered and that is how the creation story starts. So in Genesis chapter one, for instance, we have in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. 
and God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and darkness night, and evening passed and morning came, making the first day. Then God said, let there be a space between the water to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky and evening passed and morning came making the second, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place. Flow into one place. So dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land and water sea. And God saw that it was good. So then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation. Every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed bearing plants and trees with seed bearing fruit. Their seed produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening past the morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, let light appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let this light in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great light, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set this light in the sky to light the earth, to covering the day and night and to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, let the water swarm with fish and other things, other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that squirrels and swim in the water and every sort of bed, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, let the fish fill the sea and let the bears multiply on earth. And evening passed a morning came, making, marking the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals, that scroll around the ground and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animal life, livestock and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the bears in the sky, the livestock and all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the bears in the sky and all animals that move along the ground. Then God said, look, I've given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the bears in the sky and the small animals that move on the ground. Everything that has life, that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And even the past, a morning came, marking the sixth day. So we all know that God rested on the seventh day after the creation. So with what we have now, we get to know that there was, creation was done in sequence. The first day light was created, the fragment, that is water, 
under the saucepans of water above it. The second, the third day, there was a dry ground, the vegetation. The fourth day, there was a light and the ecclesial body, such as the sun, the moon, and the stars. The fifth day, every living and moving thing with which the water teams or fishes and every bed. We have the sixth day, the lights or the creatures that move along the ground and wild animals and all animals. Man was also created on that day. Man and woman, human beings were created on that day and every green plant for food. Then on the seventh day, as we know, God rested. So this is the sequence of the, the first creation story. According to Genesis chapter one, to uh, verse one to chapter two, verse four A. Now, when you get to the second creation story, the summary just look like this. It's a very simple story. We get to know that according to Genesis chapter two, verse four, we get to know uh, another whole story of another, uh, 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 another creation. But in this case, if you fuse one into the other, then you get a wonderful story. So we get another story here. And with this story, we go. You just read in the chapter two, verse four. Chapter two, verse four. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. The man and woman in Eden when the Lord made the earth and the heavens. Neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man and he, the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. Now the most, it continues. And then he said, the Lord placed the man, the verse 15, in the garden of Eden to tend and to watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat it fruit, you are sure to die. So he continued. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is right, who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he, he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out of the man's rib and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this, is, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man sleeps his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. So this gives us another creation story now, which is quite different from the first one, even though there are similarities, but we get to know that the first one was telling us in the first day God did this, the second day God did this. But in this creation story, it's a story that focuses on the beginning of the human race. If you look at it, it talks more about the Garden of Eden. It is through this story, get to know about the Garden of Eden and then the relationship between the man and the rest of the creation. We get to know that the man was the one who named the rest of the creation and was to take care of creation. 
the world God has created. He placed it in the hands of man to take good care of it. It also stayed the stage for us to see what happened in the chapter three, where we talk about then the man, the fall of man. So here we see the garden of Eden where the man is supposed to work and take care of it. The man was created, the man who was created and was given a suitable helper. So the woman was a helper to the man and God, God gave instruction as to what to eat and what not to eat. Everything to do in the garden, God made it clear to them. So if you look at the two accounts that we have given, from the first one here, and then this second one, the first creation story, Genesis chapter one, verse one to chapter two, verse four A, and then just Genesis chapter two, verse four B to verse 25, we get to know some similarities. Here, the story presupposes the existence and the mentality and the knowledge, knowledge, ability, knowledge ability of God. Now here we get to know that God is already in existence. If you look at the, the story, God is already there. He gives us an idea that we know God, God is there already. And then we get to know that God created out of nothing. He didn't create, there were, it was not like there's something there for him. Nothing, he created out of nothing. Man is assigned the highest place of all God's creation. From the two accounts we get to know, and then there's a divine degree order within which each creator fulfills the creator's role. So everyone who was created, there is a plan for that creature. They were supposed to bring forth a produce of their own kind. So you are not just created to be. You are supposed to what produce from your forth as the same as you are. So we get to know about it. But there are differences between the two. If we look at the first creation story, the Genesis chapter one, verse one to chapter two, verse four, we see that there is a kind of orderless and sequence with specific days behind each creation story. Then every day we get to know morning came, night uh, came, there was a first day, there was a second day. It seems to be orderly arranged. But if you look at the second creation story, then we see that it's just a summary, a summary narration 